Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, it's an honor to be here. Uh, thank you to the organizers for inviting me. I'm so impressed by what I've seen this morning. I really feel I've got really big shoes to follow and fit in. So uh, I hope what, you, what I speak about today is of interest. Um, and it's just great to be amongst such uh, inspiring speakers. I thought I'd start by sharing with you some of the quotes of the technology that I'm going to talk to you about today, just to sort of set the scene of what, you know, where we're going to go with the augmented reality I'm going to share with you. But first of all, it's important that I introduce myself and give you a bit more about my background and why you know, I feel I can stand up here and talk about the work that we've been doing. So I'm a plastic surgeon. I'm based in the UK. But I'm also an honorary lecturer. I play a big role in education, both at the undergraduate and postgraduate level. And I'm also mandated by the NHS to play a role in clinical entrepreneurship and clinical innovation. So my passion has always been looking at how we can improve education and sharing of knowledge through clinical innovation and how we can use the digital health age to try and improve that as well. And so I've had many roles in the innovation councils and the simulation councils as such. And I'm here really today to share with you Proximy. And Proximy is an augmented reality platform that we created to allow clinical professionals to virtually transport themselves into any setting to learn and to train and to collaborate and to really crowdsource all of that great knowledge and great you know, expertise that's happening around the world. Just to highlight at this stage what the differences are between augmented reality and virtual reality, because you know, even for me, I often get the, you know, I was, used to get those two confused. Virtual reality is a lot more what you may have seen with the Oculus and you know, with the sort of virtual setting where you put yourself in a sort of uh, a, a simulated setting. Whereas augmented reality is enhancing what we're doing already with computer generated inputs. And I found augmented reality very interesting because I thought we wanted to find a way to harness great technology, which is augmented reality, but to integrate it into work that we're doing already. And as surgeons, what we do is very visual. Uh, and so being able to put augmented reality and overlay content into our surgical fields was something that was very interesting to me. The key thing about what we were doing when we were looking at augmented reality is when the technology first started, it was very much related to wearable technology. And a lot of you may have heard of the Google Glass and the, the Microsoft HoloLens. And a lot of what people were doing in AR really relied on these wearable technologies. And whilst that's really interesting and exciting, it doesn't actually work in a day-to-day -day practice. A lot of surgeons can't operate for hours wearing these technologies on their head. You can't keep your head still for more than 30, 40 minutes at any one go to relay that information. And the other thing is it's to some extent cost prohibitive. And how do you scale technology and democratize access to the technology when you're very limited with the hardware that you need to have? And so we wanted to build a technology that was hardware agnostic, something that anyone around the world would be able to access with simple hardware that we already all own. Most people around the world own a smartphone, a computer, or a tablet. And so why not leverage that hardware and use augmented reality in a way that everyone can use it? And so Proximy works with all kinds of hardware, as, as is explained here. And of course, if you have any questions later, I can, I can go into more detail on that. What is the other key thing when we're looking at technology? And again, you know, AR and VR came from the gaming industry and has been pushing its way into healthcare. But what is important for us as clinicians? The thing about Proximy is that it was very clinician driven. It was designed by doctors for doctors. And the things that were important to us were, is it data secure? So yes, it is. It's HIPAA compliant and N3 compliant, which means that data can be shared in a safe way for patients. What's also important is that we want to be able to, in one platform, share relevant content for the patient. So patient's medical records, patient's imaging, and all of that needs to be crowdsourced into one place. The other thing that was important to us is that we want to be able to create content as we're going along. So we want people to have the ability to take snapshots of real life surgeries as they're happening, to be able to record those surgeries and come back and learn from them on demand. At the same time, to be able to partner with other content providers to be able to share all that content into one platform. Now, taking a step back, you know, and I, and I know today and yesterday you've been talking about it as well, but it's something that we face on a day to day basis, and I, see, I hear it a lot from my trainees all the time is that they find that there's reduced training opportunities for surgical trainees. And I think Shiv spoke about earlier on the, the sort of shortage of doctors. This is definitely an issue that we see in surgery, is that less and less surgery is being implemented into educational curriculum because they just can't get enough students into operating rooms. The old-fashioned viewing galleries no longer exist. And so how do we inspire medical students to choose surgery as a career? 
and how do we continue to deal with the shortage of surgeons around the world. Beyond that as well, we know that there's reduced access to expertise at the peripheries. There's no doubt that most of the countries around the world have adopted a hub and spoke model, where you have centers of excellence, teaching centers and teaching hospitals, and then smaller hospitals with reduced expertise at those. And so how can we sort of export and import expertise into different hospitals? A recent survey for medical students showed that 75% felt that they were, it was overcrowded in an operating theater. They couldn't actually learn from the surgeon. They also felt that there was a huge place for augmented reality in surgical education. And 100% of them said that they would rather watch live surgery and interact with the surgeon than just watch repeat sort of video feeds and repeat simulators. And so we're talking today about technology in healthcare and education. And so how can we deliver more personalized and self-directed and collaborative learning? How can we reshape and enrich the learning experience for students and for residents? And how can we allow the learning to extend beyond the classroom where we can use and leverage devices that we already own, such as our tablets, our computers, and our phones? Beyond that as well, how can we take advantage of the great technology, the virtual space, and try and enhance learning with, with that? And so we've, we feel that augmented reality can be a tool for experiential learning. And we know that there's a huge market for it and a huge interest in it. And you can see here on the left, and I'll be showing a video shortly, of a orthopedic surgeon joining in his students while they're doing knee arthroscopic simulators. And he's able to direct them in real time about what they're doing and how they should approach the, the knee as they're going through it arthroscopically. And so augmented reality is really about superimposing knowledge into the learner's field. We also know that as a cognitive tool, it's, it's interesting because trainees can now bring together sort of real world, physical and surgical context all into one. And it facilitates uh, participatory information and knowledge and active observer, uh, observation of mentors' procedures. And again, I'll show you some examples of that. And so, you know, at the end of the day, what we really we want to see the pictures. How does it actually work? And so you can see here, there's a surgeon on the right. He's a cleft surgeon at University of California, Riverside, guiding and supporting another surgeon in another operating room, taking him through a procedure step by step. And this scenario can really be reversed as well. You can have hundreds and hundreds of students, as we do at the moment in different parts of the world, learning and interacting with surgeons as they're operating, asking questions, trying to understand the anatomy and the clinical application of why you would perform a certain procedure in a particular setting. And you can see here, that's my hand on the, on the, right, on the right doing uh, guiding surgeons in Vietnam. And on the left there, you can see again the same surgeon guiding and marking up a patient in Peru. He's doing it purely from the comfort of his own office in California, but he's being able to actually show them and walk them through the process. It's as though he's virtually scrubbed in with them. Now, of course, evidence-based practice is very important for us, as it is for most of you in the room. And so we spent a lot of time before we even took this out into the market validating the product and looking at its accuracy, looking at its bandwidth adaptability, and how it would be able to work across different countries, across different cities, and with different qualities of, of, of internet. And we were able to show that really the anthropometric difference is less than a millimeter, which is very accurate. If you can perform cleft surgery using such a technology, you can pretty much perform any procedure. And I won't, this is a very busy slide, so I won't go into too much detail, but I just wanted to highlight that you know, educationalists have also looked at AR's use in education, how it allows better learning. And they were able to show that learning acquired using AR was far higher than that in video and in notes. So it's something about being able to overlay context, being able to interact with a surgeon in real time and learn from them. And so proxy is used really in three cases, three main cases. We use it with doctors collaborating together across different countries. We use it in device, medical device training, but the focus I want to focus on today is how we use it in educational learning. And University College London, which uh, is an you know, esteemed institution in the United Kingdom, were the first to really harness its use in education training and felt that this could really add value to their medical students' learning experience. And you know, it, there's no doubt this is how surgery used to be taught in the old days. You know, operation comes from the word opera, and, and surgery is a very visual specialty, and we like to show and share what we're doing. And so historically, when people used to sit in a viewing gallery, they used to learn from the surgeon first firsthand and talk to them and interact with them. Now, of course, this is a bit facetious, the picture on the left, but it's about you know, how do you get all these people into an operating room to learn from different procedures? It's not even about the developing and the developed world. It's about being able to share knowledge about new ways of doing things. And so in a simple setting here, you can see that 
in a live surgical field, I can put my hand into the surgical space and talk to them about what's going on, about the fracture. I can correlate it with the medical imaging or any videos or anatomy demonstrations that are useful. And because we're able to have these multiple split screens, you can really bring in any content. So for example, we have a partnership with Yale where they have offered us 60 of their highly curated anatomical cadaveric videos, which they've created for their own medical school. They see the value in being able to share content on a platform like Proximy. And what they do now is that we can actually play their videos alongside a, a surgical procedure. So you can actually correlate lots of bits of information in real time at the same time. I'm going to show you a short video here. Um, we don't need to have the volume too high. I'll just talk over it because I know there's translation uh, and the voice is not very clear. But the idea here is what you can see is this is in a simulator lab. So it's a simulated lab looking at arthroscopic surgery where students are practicing the arthroscopic tools. And you can see here Dr. Tompkins, who's an orthopedic surgeon, is sitting in another part of the, the medical school, and he's guiding them through the procedure, talking to them about the anterior cruciate ligament and how they should approach it. Um, you want to raise the volume just a little bit? Yeah. So, see that? That's very important. It's still got an attachment, right, you guys, right here? There you go. Nice job. You see him turn up. Excellent. You see this? So you can see he can interact with them and he can really reinforce the learning. You know, I've been in many simulator labs and, you know, I've, I've spent many years doing simulation training where it's extremely useful, but it would be so nice to actually have the, the, the lead surgeon, lead clinician actually walking me through a learning. And the same interaction you can see here is happening in the operating rooms already. And so the Proximy dashboard is very important because we wanted to be able to personalize the learning. And so every user has their own user where the user kind of database where they can see how much time they're spending on it. You can capture data analytics about what surgeries they're, in, they're getting excited about, what they're learning from, you know, what questions they ask. And that's really important because it's a lot about personalized learning these days. On the dashboard, they also can find out all the live operations that are happening either scheduled in the future or at the moment in their hospital. And also there's a news feed where they can push relevant information. It can either be the clinical leads or the academic leads pushing relevant information, interesting articles that they can learn from, or it could just be students sharing, you know, Dr. Thompson's doing a great operation in, in OR3, you know, log in, have a look. And so it's about being able to really um, socialize and, and democratize and kind of bring together all that information to one place. And all the, all the videos that are happening are being stored into a library and they're being categorized by specialty and by subspecialty. And so you can then have the on-demand viewing where you can come back in your own time and watch it. I'll give you a small example of a snapshot of six weeks at UCL. UCL is one of the institutions that's been using it with the Royal Free Hospital. We were able to stream 64 hours of surgery in over six weeks. 26 senior surgeons were involved, and 114 medical students were logging in to different cases to learn. You can see even from one case, and this was a transplant case, over 30 questions were asked in that interactive period. Again, this is breaking it down into two shorter cases. You can see a transplant case, which ran over six hours with three lead surgeons, had you know, 12 logins, which was over 50% of the, the general surgical students asking over 10 questions. So it's about them being able to interact in different cases as they're happening throughout the year or throughout their time on a rotation. And so what we were able to show is that Proximy improves at least 20% of student, 23% of student learning. That interactive access to live surgeons and direct access to, to contact with them does enhance and enrich their learning experience. It definitely solves the problem of lack of access to operating theaters in the surgical setting. And students, we found, are logging on even during their spare time. Even if they had 15 or 20 minutes break between another lecture, they were logging on just to learn and to see. In their spare time in the evenings, they were also logging on and watching emergency cases happening in our emergency ORs. And they were being exposed to hundreds of hours of surgery live from the comfort of their home or library or classroom. And so Proximy is growing its global impact. We are currently in California. We're at Yale. We're in South America, Europe, in the Middle East, and in Vietnam, and we're continuing to grow. These are our current partners, which range from education, educational institutions, NGOs, as well as medical institutions and medical device companies. Um, as I said, we have Yale, University of College London, UC Riverside, the American University of Beirut, but also some really impressive charities such as MSF, Smile Train, and more recently, the Syrian American Medical Society, who are using our technology as they're offering care across the borders. We've also been very proud of the awards that we were awarded. So we've had the Royal Society of Medicine eHealth top prize, 
The Qatar Foundation took us to the WISH event as one of the top uh, global innovation showcases. The one that I'm very proud of is the Foreign Press Association Award, which was the science story of the year that we won last year. And it was really because of the impact that this technology had. You know, a lot of people are out there in the med tech space talking about great technology and using it in really cool ways to sort of educate. But it's also about the impact you have on patients' lives. Because at the end of the day, it's about how this education is helping the doctors to become better doctors and therefore help patients. And we were able to use this technology to help a patient in Gaza who had a mangled hand and how the surgeon in another country was able to walk a surgeon through a procedure to help them through it. And I'll just end on sort of our social impact component as well. You know, five billion people around the world don't have access to safe surgery. And that's a fact that was published by the Lancet Commission not long ago. And there's absolutely no way we're going to be able to create enough surgeons to manage that problem. So we have to look at smart ways to do that and technology that's going to allow us to force and multiply our expertise around the world. And so we've been playing some role, a small role, but even if we can you know, change 1% of that, that's really important for us. And so at the moment, we've been used in Gaza and in Peru and Vietnam. And you can see some of the work that we're doing with surgeons from the UK and the US. And you can see here, and I just want to highlight it's a simple tablet that the doctor owns himself and a camera. We didn't need to fly in any special equipment to him. He didn't need to have to expend millions of dollars on a fancy operating room camera. It's simple to hardware that everyone owns. And this is some of the feedback that we've had from our students, really saying that you know, they felt it was better than being in the operating room itself. But more importantly, the surgeons were enjoying it just as much. And they felt it was great to sort of share their experiences with their students and to hear the questions that they had to ask them. Thank you.